Now the question is, what is the, remember uh, there is a particular function, what, what are the two functions, so let's talk about it, let me step back and let's talk about what are the functions of a B cell. B cell primarily has two functions, one function is, so the B cell functions, one is to release, to release, to make and release immunoglobulins, right, IgGs immunoglobulins. So, what is that function? That function is the fighting the immune, uh, fighting as part of, as component of the immune system. So, that is the acquired arm of immune system function. This is humoral response. Why humoral? Humor means fluid. In the, in the past when the science was not so evolved, when we could not observe the body and the tissues and the cells to this level as we can do today. Uh, scientists and doctors used to think that there is something in the fluid which gives uh, allergies and which creates the protection. So, they called it humoral immune mechanism. So, now we know that it is really the immunoglobulins present in the uh, tissue, uh, in the plasma and the uh, interstitial tissue. So, this is a humoral response, fluid response in the fluid. The other function which you I think know from the previous lectures is the APC function of a B cell, antigen presenting cell. So, that is very interesting. The question is why does a B cell do APC function? Why does it have an immunoglobulin on its surface and what is the function of B cell being an APC, right? Macrophage is an APC we understand. Uh, dendritic cells are APCs we understand. They are professional APCs that do that function to activate the immune system. Why is B cell that is a humoral effector of the immune system also acting as an APC? So, let us look at that. This is a very fascinating story. So, let us check. The APC function and the reason for the APC function of a B cell. So, let us make a B cell here. So, a B cell shows an IgM as we just talked, IgM or an IgD on its surface. So, the first thing from USMLE point of view, these both the immunoglobulins can be expressed simultaneously, simultaneously. That is why you should also remember and we will talk about it today that these two immunoglobulins are produced by messenger RNA alternate splicing instead of DNA rearrangement. This is a very, very important concept and it is a, of course, a question in the USMLE and many, many of us get trapped in this one. These are not DNA rearrangement production, they are produced by DNA rearrangement and then by alternate splicing. So, anyways, the IgM and IgD that are present here, these are acting as receptors. What does that mean? So, they are acting to catch antigens on the surface. Okay, cool. They will catch the antigen, then what? They are going to act as APCs. It is very interesting. Once they have caught some antigen, so let me make one more IgD or IgM here and one more here. Do not mind the colors. It is just supposed to be the same black color. So, let us say these, these are the immunoglobulins they have become cross connected, there has been some antigen, some pathogen which has connected with them and then what happens is B cell would internalize them, remember these are recycled. So, these antigens with the antibodies, immunoglobulins will be internalized, right. So, they, they are taken in. Here, these antigens, the pathogen will be processed and transferred on MHC2. Remember, this is an APC cell, right? So, it is acting in an, an APC. So, this will be the antigen from here will be finally transferred on, on MHC2. Of course, it would also be transferred on MHC1 because it is a nucleated cell. So, do not get me wrong that there is no MHC1, there is MHC1 and the MHC1 would have the antigen on it as well and they all are going to be expressed. So, now what we got? We got MSC1 
expressing the antigen. We also got MHC2 expressing the antigen, MHC2. Benefit, we are talking about the APC function, it is a very selfish function for the B cell. So, this MHC2 will work with, um, let us make it work with the T cell. So, let us say this is a T cell receptor, we have talked about it before. So, this is a T cell and let us say this is a helper 2 T cell, why? Because helper 2 T cells work with the B cells. Right. So, now what kind of MHC is this one? Remember the rule of 8. So, if it is 2, then this is MHC, MHC 4. So, MHC 2 and the T cell receptor um, CD4 helper cell. So, now they have connected. Then what happens is, now pay attention to this one. B cell need to activate the T cell only so that T cell can activate the B cell. So, this is why they, they are acting as an APC. They are acting as an APC so that a T cell can come connect with them so they can become active. A B cell cannot become active until a T cell interacts with it. That is a very important thing from pathology point of view. When you will do pathology, you will see there are going to be a lot of reasons that this interaction is not going to be working successfully and that would cause B cell not to be able to work properly. What is a proper function? They should once they become active, they should make immunoglobulin G, they should make immunoglobulin A or E, but when they will not be activated, which immunoglobulin they would continue making IgM and IgD. So, remember hyper gamma globulinemia that is this, right. So, this interaction here, what happens? I think we have talked about it before, I am going to just remove MSC1 for the time being. So, the B7, B7 protein connects with the CD28 and how do I remember it that which side has B7 and CD28? Of course, this has B, so that is B7 and the 8 looks like B to me. So, I always can combine these two and say, okay, B7 always works with the CD28. The other one, the other one that is the most important one, still the, the B cell is not active. This is activating the T cell. B cell is not active. So, what is happening is B cell is activating the T cell so that the T cell can activate the B cell back. It is helping itself, it is being selfish. The other one is CD40. So, if this is the CD40, CD40 will work with the CD40 ligand from the T cell and connect there. So, again here how do I remember it? Uh, the ligand L to me looks like an inverse T. So, T cell L CD40 ligand. So, CD40 ligand come from the helper cell while CD40 is coming from the B cell. These three interactions, the interaction of MHC2 with the T cell receptor, of course, there is CD3 here. I think you know all T cell receptors have gotten CD3. Interaction of B7 and CD28, interaction of CD40 and CD40L. These are the co-stimulatory interactions. This one is specially important. Why this is important is that this would actually cause class switching. It is actually going to be, this is one of the stimulation for class switching. So, we will talk about class switching today with the B cells. Uh, remember CD40 and CD40L many times when there is a defect in this interaction, class switching does not occur. The other, so these are mechanical physical connections. The more chemical or hormonal like connections are the I think you know IL-2, IL-4, IL-5, interleukin-2, interleukin-4, interleukin-5. What is their function? Interleukin-2 would activate the T cell itself. It would also activate the B cell. IL-4 is going to create proliferation of the B cell. It would activate the B cell. That is what the B cell wanted. So, we are saying why is the B cell acting as an APC? This is why it is this is what it is getting now is the reward time. So, once it has presented the pathogen, uh, the antigen to the helper cell, the, here is the reward. 
CD28, oh, sorry, interleukin 2 and interleukin 4, the B cell would have more copies. So that is the proliferation. Proliferation simply means making copies or clones. This is also called clonal proliferation or clonal expansion, making clones of a cell, making copies of a cell. So clonal expansion is occurring. So B cell got one reward, it got multiple clones. The second reward, there is one more thing before I go to the second reward. IL-4 also helps in class switching towards IgE. This is a USMLE question and this also is important from a medical doctor's point of view. Why? Because IgE is involved in allergies. And how does the IgE class switching occurs via IL-4 and CD14, CD40L. So of course, if we try to control those, we can probably try to control IgE and that would create, uh, reduce the uh, autoimmune diseases. But anyways, in normal defense mechanism, IgE is important, it is needed and for that what uh, interleukin is needed? Interleukin 4 and this is a US, USMLE question. Interleukin 5, interleukin 5 on the other hand is for IgA. So that also helps with the class switching to IgA. So class switching is an important thing here. IgA class switching with IL-5, IgE class switching with IL-4 plus proliferation, clonal expansion with IL-4. IL-5 does one more thing and that is differentiation. So what is differentiation? In, uh, in the study of these cells and biology, differentiation is when a cell becomes more and more specific for its function. For example, when the zygote starts, it's just cells, then they become more and more, they start making body tissue of various kinds, then they start making, you know, first they start just making lumps of tissues, then they become even more uh, specialized and they make specific tissues and so on. Similarly, a B cell is triggered by this antigen. The differentiation will mean that this B cell would now become more and more specific for that uh, particular antigen and become more honed and more smart. So IL-5 helps B cell become smart and sharp. So that these are the actions. So why does, if somebody asks you why does a B cell act as an APC? The answer is it wants to be activated and for that when it acts as an APC, it activates a T cell. The T cell in return activates the B cell and the activation knee is needed to become proliferated and to become differentiated. And once it is differentiated, that B cell will become plasma cell. And once it does become plasma cell, it would start releasing the immunoglobulins. It's an active cell, it is a plasma cell, it is a happy cell, and it is releasing stuff. What is needed? CD40, B7, CD28, IL2, IL4, IL5. Of course, the main um, interaction is needed as well. So that is our first part of the topic today, that is the B cell. We will continue now with the structure of the immunoglobulin. Thank you.